everyone. It's Hillary Bradshaw from Selwyn Township. I'm the climate change coordinator. Thanks for joining in on uh, our very first Facebook Live um, as we are here to answer your questions um, about the Clear Bag program as we are starting that September 1st of this year. So we'll wait a few minutes, we'll let people join in and uh, we'll get going and uh, feel free to leave a comment with your questions. Megan is going to be facilitating the questions on the comments and then um, we'll be answering them that way. So we'll just take a few minutes. Hopefully everyone is cool um, and are staying uh, indoors during this very hot, uh, humid stretch of weather we've been having. So um, hopefully people are having nice uh, pool days or beach days um, and just getting some fun last summer uh, adventures out and uh, yeah so uh, it's always a time that I usually do hay so it's uh, always the hottest time of the year and so I uh, have to bale hay and get that all ready for um, the horsies. So um, please feel free anyone that's just joined on um, we're going to be here answering some of your questions about the clear bag program Megan will be looking at the comments as they come in and we'll just be answering them as a first come first basis. Um, and we will hopefully get everyone clarified and ready for September 1st. And if you have any um, questions about you know, where to buy some of them, there are some local retailers that have various sizes of the clear bags. You just might have to, if you want, you can always call ahead and confirm that they have the size that you're requiring. Um, we do have it on our, on our website and uh, it's just on the FAQ uh, questionnaire that we have. So you can find some of the local retailers that way and uh, get some of the various sizes of clear bags you, should, you might need. So we'll just wait a few minutes. Um, this again is our first Facebook Live. So uh, we welcome everybody and please bear with us as we are also learning how to do this. and. Um, please be kind in any of the comments and I will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. So we have about 14 people watching right now. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions, but Hillary, maybe we can kind of get started with some of the frequently asked questions that we have been getting about the program. Okay. So frequently asked questions is, you know, What's a clear bag? And why is the Township of Selwyn interested in doing this? So Selwyn is the last um, municipality in the Peterborough County area that will be implementing the clear bags. It is to inc increase the uh, amount of recyclables going from uh, not diverting them from the landfill and going to the proper um, recyclable facilities. So it's to increase the recycling and decrease the amount of recyclables going to the landfill. It also really keeps any hazardous waste out of the landfill. Um, because the garbage will be in a clear or see-through bag, collectors will cl uh, quickly realize if there is um, something that's a hazardous waste. So paint, oil, car batteries, you name it. Things like that cannot go into the garbage. They really do need to be uh, properly disposed of. So the clear bags are gonna keep our landfill and the environment um, uh, protected, not having any of those kind of um, hazardous materials uh, leak into the environment. And it also collect, um, protects the collectors at curbside and the landfill attendants at site. So, um, and I think Megan's gonna ask a question and I will answer. So one of the questions we've been getting a lot is what do we do about our food waste? That's a great question. So because we don't have an option for curbside organics, um, we are still allowing food waste um, to go into your garbage. There are alternatives if you're able to do this at home. We do have backyard composters for sale at the office. And we also do sell digesters, which is sort of a composter hybrid. And it just in requires a little bit more installation if you have any questions regarding backyard composting or digesters, you can find that information on the township's website under the green initiatives. 
And if you have any questions, you can certainly always call the township office um, and then leave me a voicemail and I will get back to you and answer any of those types of questions. But for sure, you can always still continue to put your uh, food waste into the garbage. Um, until future times, we will, uh, we will readdress um, maybe alternatives to what to do with that waste um, in the near future. Um, I have another question. Um, so, what if there's something I don't want my neighbors to see? I like, maybe I don't feel like my neighbors, I want them to see my cat litter. Right. So if you don't want something visible um, to the collectors or if you have it at the curb and it's um, not in a bin and you don't want neighbors or anyone passing by to see it, you are allowed to have one opaque garbage bag inside the, with the rest of your garbage. So sort of the size of a grocery shopping bag. We often have them hanging around if you forgot to, uh, if you had to run into the grocery store and didn't have your reusable bags. If you use that and you want to put your um, kitty litter in uh, that and then put it in with the rest of your garbage, that will totally be okay and that's considered your privacy bag. So um, that is great and it can, it, anything that you don't want um, visible, so anything um, in a bathroom or uh, private or sensitive documents, you can definitely put in that privacy bag and just add it to the rest of your garbage um, in that clear bag. So we have a question from um, Wendy. How do you keep raccoons out of backyard composters? <laughs> you live in the, in the rural areas, Wendy. So yes, um, raccoons have a great uh, and they're also very good little engineers. So um, if you have a composter at home, um, depending on the type of composter, you might want to uh, look at uh, barricades. Um, make sure that if the, the barricade is, um, is a kind of a fence or something like that, uh, making sure that the raccoon, if they try to go through it, um, they also don't injure themselves uh, doing, this, doing so. Um, another alternative is if you're finding a really big issue with the raccoons, uh, there is an alternative to just a, a backyard composter, which is a digester. So if you think of um, sort of an outhouse, actually, it's a hole in the ground and you fill the ground with your food waste. And the benefits of having a digester is you can actually put all of your food waste in it. So not only just your organics, but your bones, your chick, like your meats, dairy, everything. Um, and because it's actually underground and there's a cone at the top, um, the smells from your food are not being um, outside of the of the ground. And so that way your wildlife shouldn't be being encouraged to you know rifle through that. Um, if you try to think if you have um, depending on where your composter is, if you want, you can always um, have uh, kind of a motion detector light. They don't like being visible. They're um, often shy. Um, and that way it just helps deter them um, in a more humane like uh, way and just, you know, telling them, get away from my, gar my composter. Um, and otherwise, if you are if they're just eating and going through it and not causing a lot of damage, you know, at least somebody's getting um, some of the leftover waste and uh, everybody's happy. So if you have any questions about um, the composters themselves, you can find some helpful resources. Peterborough Green Up has great resources for backyard composting. Um, if you need any more further assistance, please feel free uh, to give me a call and we can discuss maybe some of those other alternatives. Um, other than that, um, Yes, that is a very common issue in this area for, um, you know, wildlife getting in with some of our composters. Okay, and we have another question from Arthur. Um, he asks, can the see-through clear blue tinted bags, are they okay to use? Hi, Arthur. So yes, um, if you have those see-through uh, kind of uh, blue bags that were often used for actually recycling at the time, uh, you can use those for your garbage. Um, Peterborough County is the one who operates and manages the recycling and they are asking not to have bagged recyclables. So just put it loose in your containers. But if you have those blue bags, you certainly can uh, put your garbage in that as long as the collectors um, can see that um, 
see through the material, you are totally on board. So if you got a box of those, you can, keep, you can certainly use those. All right, and then we have another uh, question from Terry. Uh, what about kitchen garbage bags? Do they have to be clear too? He hasn't here, sorry, he or she, Terry, sorry. Uh, I haven't been able to find them at Foodland. Okay, so various sizes of the clear bags are you know, retailer uh, dependent. So I recommend always giving somewhere a call. We do have uh, a handy list on our FAQ uh, uh, pamphlet on our website, and it has some lists of retailers that do have them. We did reach out and just made sure um, if you want to go to Home Hardware, they do have the various sizes, the small ones, which you're talking about for the kitchen ones. Um, if you have you know, a box of those white uh, kitchen size ones uh, to use up, you can certainly use those. Just, um, you know, maybe don't fill it because we'll just consider that as your uh, privacy bag and just uh, transition to the clear bags when you can find them in stores. But as I said, uh, most of the retailers locally are aware of our uh, clear bag program and are stocking of various sizes. So best case, always give a call ahead to make sure that they've got some uh, of the size that you're requiring in stock. Awesome. So uh, I don't see any other questions. However, uh, guys, remember that if, uh, if you want to be entered for a chance to win a year's supply of clear bags, um, just submit a question and you'll be entered into the draw. It's easy as that. Uh, so since there's none yet, I'm gonna ask a couple more. Um, so does the number of bags I can put at the curb change with this new program? So with this new program, the, the number of bags does not change. So as per our waste bylaw uh, for the Township of Selwyn, we are allowed to have two garbage bags for your curb for pickup. Um, or if you do use a container, you can have a container of garbage. Um, we are asking everybody um, at this time to bag their garbage um, because of COVID-19. We're just keeping our collectors um, safe. And at this time, some people are used to put uh, loose garbage into the containers. So at this time, we're not doing that because of COVID-19. So until further notice, um, just bag your garbage. Um, and then hopefully in the near future, we can transition back to um, even just no bags and you can just um, have your garbage loose into the container. So no, no change to the number of bags you can put at the curb. It's two for residential um, addresses and commercial, you can have four. So if you have any issues, um, give us a call and uh, we can have, certainly answer any of your questions or if you're here live um, we're happy to answer those questions in the comments and as I, as megan mentioned uh, anyone that comments uh, gets to be entered into a draw for a year supply of clear garbage bags so what's not better than free so answer away or question like uh, ask some silly questions uh, we're here to um, help you uh, be comfortable as we transition to the clear bags um, starting September 1st. So, um, so yeah. since we still don't have any questions, um, I'm going to ask, let's, uh, let's see, what are some things that we may, that people may not know about our landfill? Um, oh, just got another question actually. Uh, so another Terry, wow, popular name tonight. Um, will they leave the bag if they see something that they are not sure of? Not sure of. So the collectors are aware of what they can and cannot take. So it's really just making sure um, that most of your recyclables are properly put into the recycle bin. If your garbage bag has a ton of recycling and there's no blue bins that you've even attempted to try to recycle, um, they can refuse that. Um, and along with any hazardous waste, anything that they're um, unsafe or unsure about actually collecting, they have the right to refuse. It keeps them safe. And um, again, it's just to uh, encourage the recycling in our area, um, decreasing the amount of recyclables going to the landfill, and again, keeping the hazardous waste type materials, again, out of the, the landfill and being properly disposed of in de uh, different locations. Awesome. So I don't see any other questions just yet. 
Um, Terry answered, asked a similar question after that one. So that one's covered. But um, before I was talking about kind of the things that people don't know about in terms of our landfill. So for example, I think a lot of people don't realize that um, we have a clothing donation box at our landfill now uh, for the Diabetes Association. So are there any other interesting did not knows um, that you think are uh, that people would be interested in? Right. So lots of people, we've been going through COVID in the last, you know, seems like a year and a half, it seems like now. Um, so a lot of people have been going through their house and trying to get rid of uh, some things, downsizing um, and, or just moving. So lots of people have been finding things and they're not sure exactly what to do with. So the Selwyn landfill is uh, for Selwyn residents only. Um, so just make sure you have your landfill pass when you go. Um, but they do have various diversion programs actually at the landfill. So if you have any scrap material, um, metal material, there is a bin for that. We also have um, uh, a, like a construction and demolition uh, area. So if you've been doing some home renovations or if you've got a contractor, um, they can certainly divert some of that material out of the landfill and be actually recycled. We also do have a tire uh, area. So if you've got some used tires that you want to get rid of, uh, the landfill does accept them at no charge. So if they're on rims or off, um, we just unfortunately cannot take uh, tractor tires, anything really large. We just unfortunately um, are un unable to accept at this time. We also do have a brush pile. So if you've been doing some tree, tree chillings, um, there's a brush pile and it gets, um, you know, uh, uh, chipped and uh, put in various locations. And we do have a compost pile as well for any lake weeds, any uh, garden weeds, grass clippings, small material like that. Um, in the recycle area, we do have an electronics bin. So if you've been in the recycle area, if you're familiar with it, there is a green bin um, with a yellow table. If you go there, um, you can take any of your re um, any of your electronic waste. So if you've got some old uh, laptops, cell phones, um, camcorders, just kind of anything like that, fans, vacuums, you can certainly put on the table and they accept it. Just make sure there's nothing like Freon in it. So any um, Freon units, which include air conditioners, dehumidifiers, ice makers, all of those kind of coolant materials have to be disposed of in the proper location in the landfill. So just tell the scale house attendant that you've got one and then they'll tell you exactly where to put it. Um, we also do have a battery drop off as well at the landfill. And as Megan mentioned, we do have a textile um, uh, bin for the Canadian diabetes and it does accept um, broken uh, you know zippers things like that um, anything that they can't use in um, the restores they are shredded and put into uh, recycled materials so um, lots of options um, so it's just getting again helping divert some of that material uh, that most people would put right into the landfill it just helps diverting some of that um, material into different locations that can be variously um, recycled in the area. Okay, so we've got quite a few questions came in now. Um, so Maris uh, says, what do we do with paper towels and Kleenex? So paper towels and Kleenex, anything that's used, that just goes into your garbage. Um, if you've got the paper towel roll or the Kleenex box, um, that's kind of your curated um, uh, cardboard that can certainly go into your blue bin for your um, papers and plastic uh, bin. But use tissues, uh, use really anything, your masks right now, any PPE uh, that we've been using over the course of the year and a half, that all just goes right into the garbage um, because it's just um, anything used kind of a, is almost like a, a hazard. So uh, it just uh, makes everyone safe and it just goes right into your garbage. Perfect. And we have another question from Wendy. Uh, so if the uh, collectors don't take the garbage, will they let us know why it was refused? Yes. So we do have some stickers um, that our collectors will um, have on, on deck with them uh, in their trucks. And we also will do um, some follow-ups. So we've asked our contractor um, to uh, give us some the residents uh, addresses so that we can follow up. We do have some door hangers that we will follow up with and some clear bags. So 
uh, anyone that had something that was refused, uh, they can get some more information and get started with the clear bags. Okay, and then a question from Jeff. Is styrofoam still garbage or able to be recycled? All right, so um, styrofoam is garbage. If you take it to Bensford Road in Peterborough, there may be um, a diversion program there. Um, I unfortunately can't confirm that. So best case, I would give Peterborough County or Peterborough City a call and just ask if they do still have the, the styrofoam diversion program. Because of COVID, there's lots of programs that used to be implemented and just haven't been at the time because of lack of um, you know, resources and such like that. So uh, check with that, but for sure, you can just put styrofoam in the garbage, yeah. Okay, and we have a question from Kathy. Uh, she's heard that pizza boxes or anything greasy shouldn't be put in the garbage. Is this true? Great question. Yes, um, greasy pizza is delicious. And uh, unfortunately, um, the bottom of that cardboard box, if it's really um, greasy and um, uh, really saturated with that, if you want, you can rip it off. You can put the bottom that's really soaked in grease into the garbage and put the top that is uh, less uh, soiled from your pizza into the recycling in your container for your, um, your paper and cardboard. Um, there are some boxes out there, you know, if you really want to try and peel it back, but depending on the type of pizza you get, it might be really greasy. And uh, it's uh, that way you can always, uh, you know, just cut it off and throw that in the garbage and then toss the rest that's less uh, grease filled uh, into the recycle. So great question. Awesome. Um, and then I, Leanne, uh, she said, is there any form of education provided if a bag is refused? I think we, we answered that one, but yes, we will definitely um, be doing some kind of education piece if the bag is refused. So you would definitely see either a sticker on your bag or you'd be getting a, a, a door hanger um, with some more information on it. Um, we've got... Uh, Wendy said... Oh, good suggestion. I was at the landfill for the first time recently. May I suggest that tours would be a good idea? That is a great idea. I do know prior to COVID that they, we often did um, school tours, but um, you know, going forward, if there is new residents that you know are unfamiliar with the area, um, tours are you know something that if you'd be very much interested, we could happily do that. Um, just because of COVID right now, um, we obviously wouldn't want to do it in groups. So um, that is a great suggestion. So let, uh, let us sit on that and uh, maybe ponder about how we could go through um, implementing something like that so that new, uh, new residents are familiar with exactly where everything goes at the landfill. Yeah, and maybe even it becomes a Facebook Live. Seems to be a popular choice. <laughs> yes, yes, we could certainly walk around the land. <laughs> uh, so we have a question from Robert. Um, paper plates that are used with food, where do they go? Is it garbage or recycling? Anything with used food on it really just goes into the garbage. So and from paper products. So if you've got the paper plates and you know it has lots of uh, food grease or um, food material and it's not easily um, scraped off unfortunately the paper plate can just uh, will also just be put into the garbage if it's fairly clean and doesn't have a lot of uh, debris or grease on it you can certainly throw those uh, less used uh, dirty ones into the recyclables in your um, paper and cardboard materials all right and then we have another great question uh, so Amy it says, if I have one full bag of garbage with a privacy bag and I need to put out a second privacy bag, does that second privacy bag need to be put in a clear bag? That is a very great question and a common question that we have been receiving. So you do not have to double bag that. If you've got your clear bag with your one opaque uh, privacy bag and you just have one extra um, opaque bag for your uh, other small uh, privacy items, you do not have to put that into a clear bag. Don't waste your money, uh, don't waste uh, the plastic. So certainly just put it um, next to your garbage um, for your curbside and they'll pick it up, no other problem. Awesome. 
And Arthur wants us to remind the residents that old toasters and metal kitchen products can be dropped off at a metal recycling bins across the community. Yes. So we do have quite a few metal drop-off uh, locations in the township. So by all means, <laughs> don't tell, but if uh, if you wanted to drop off your metal bins and metal metal items in those bins, by all means, we'd prefer to see it go get recycled rather than uh, tossed in the landfill for sure. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there are free drop-off locations um, that many people um, around the township have. So certainly you can use those resources and take your uh, metal products that way. Um, just again, really be cautious um, with taking anything like fridges, air conditioners, um, anything with Freon in it. So anything that has like a coolant um, product, so something that's gonna produce cool air or keep something cool, needs to be properly uh, diverted. So um, I just recommend making sure you're not taking those materials to any of the, the free metal bin drop-offs because we certainly don't want Freon um, being uh, accidentally spilt in the environment because it's not good. Yeah, and then Matt uh, does a little, he's wanting to let us know, or uh, Mterra on Pido Road. Um, Mterra is our recycling collector that is contracted by Peterborough County, um, but they take styrofoam. Thank they you. Do. Wonderful. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Um, and then Robert, uh, I think this is in relation to the pizza question, um, but he would like to know, uh, will the uh, collectors see the grease part? So in other words, like, will they see it and not reject garbage because they see cardboard instead of the grease? Right. So if you've got a few items in your garbage that are technically uh, recyclable and they don't see that side that's greasy, or even if you have, um, so often if you, uh, if you cook bacon or anything like that that has grease and you don't want to put that directly into your garbage. Sometimes people put it into like an old soup can. If you don't want to scrape the soup can out, you can certainly just toss that into the garbage. Um, again, it's really just kind of a percentage. If they see that you've clearly uh, put out some of your blue bins and are trying to recycle a few of the materials that are recyclable in your garbage, you'll still get picked up. So that won't be an issue. Um, so no worries. And yes, I see Wendy likes the idea of the tours, um, but she definitely suggests when the weather is cooler, for <laughs> sure. Yes, Wendy. <laughs> what? You don't want to walk around the landfill when it's nice and smelly and uh, in the 40 degree weather? Yeah. It's also a slight hill there, so I don't want to be walking in that, uh, in that heat either. So <laughs> certainly something maybe to look forward to. Uh, to do something in the fall for. So. Yeah, and then uh, this is our last question as of right now, but remember guys, uh, if you submit a question, you will be entered into a draw for a year's supply of clear garbage bags. Woo-hoo! Quite the hot commodity. Uh, so Maris, um, she asks, does garbage we take to the landfill need to be in clear bags and will someone there be inspecting our garbage? Right, so clear bags, um, as soon as September 1st hits, will be implemented for both curbside and at the landfill. So if you have some leftover black bags and you're like, oh no, what am I supposed to do with them? So you can always donate those to friends or family that are still in the uh, municipality that is still allowed to use black or opaque bags. Um, If you take them to the landfill, um, they may accept them um, kind of a one-time thing. And then, uh, you know, going forward, they'll have to have them to be clear. if you have, you know, clothing donations uh, and you have a, some uh, opaque or black bags left over, you can certainly put any of those donations right into the, those bags. Um, so, um, yeah. So going forward, as of September first, clear bags for both curbside and for the landfill. So yes, garbage will have to be in clear bags for anything going to the landfill. Um. Oh, we have another one. Uh, Samantha. Why can't we use blue bags for recycling? Why does it need to be loose? That's a great question, Samantha. I won't um, really respond to that simply because we are not the um, operations uh, for the uh, recycling. That's through Peterborough County. So um, if you had that uh, common question, give them a a call or an email and they'd be happy to answer that question for you. Um, Likely, it's just uh, just another way of helping uh, limit some of the plastic use and um, and then something you don't have to buy buy so you don't have to bag each uh, recycle bin so 
maybe look at it as a positive. You don't have to purchase more bags or um, create more plastic waste. So. And uh, I believe I also heard um, that Peterborough County or uh, MTERA, the recycling contractor, doesn't like the bags because they actually get gummed up in the truck itself, um, which can then cause damage. And then that means one of their trucks are out of commission, which then means that they perhaps will take longer to pick up our recycling. Um, so that's one thing. And then Samantha, if you do have those blue uh, bags um, that you do have left over, by all means, use those for your garbage now. Yeah, you can certainly use um, a colored uh, transparent bag. So anything um, that you can still see through, if it's got a color of tinge of blue, green, orange, whatever you've, uh, you've collected, you can certainly use that for your garbage going forward. So if you've got some of those leftover blue bags, you can use them for your garbage. Perfect. And then Robert, thank you for uh, letting me know that the question was missed. This uh, Facebook Live is a new thing. Um, but uh, Robert would like to know, dog poop in colored bags, how do we dispose of them? Right. Uh, that's a good question. So dog waste bags um, often come in, um, you know, the little standard size um, for individual, you know, dog waste. Um, so you can certainly just add those right into your garbage. So um, you don't have to seldom on the market I have seen um, is a clear version of the dog waste bags. So if you've got, you know, those typical green or some of the black ones, you can certainly use those, just toss those bags into the, your clear bag for your garbage. The collector will also just quickly notice, you know, those are dog waste bags and it'll totally be fine. Yeah. And then uh, we have Laura um, asking, uh, why are the yard waste bags only picked up for a few months in the spring? We find it very inconvenient and messy as most people have grass and weeds from spring to winter. All right. So it's a great question. Again, that is actually a program that runs through the Peterborough County. So they are the ones that operate the curbside collector, uh, collection for um, yard and leaf waste during twice a year. So they have a springtime and also a fall collection. So, um, and again, because of just our area, we're a little bit more rural, uh, they aren't able to have curbside for the entire area. So unfortunately, it's just in certain areas of high volume. So if you're in an area that has curbside yard waste, that's awesome and very convenient. Um, and so uh, at this time, it's only two times a year that's uh, offered for the curbside collection. You certainly can always take it to the landfill. So if you've got um, just small amounts of garbage or small amount of uh, yard waste, it's free under 50 kilograms, I believe. And um, and that way, um, you know, if you've got a little bit of uh, yard waste, you can take it there. You just go over the landfill, the over the scale, just tell them what you've got and they'll tell you uh, where to pay, put it. Um, so certainly, um, use the curbside collection when you can. Um, and then for the rest of the year, if you've just got small amounts, certainly take it to the landfill and uh, you can put it into the compost pile there. Um, and then this might actually be a good opportunity. Um, may, maybe kind of going over like, what is the township programs like and things that we're responsible for and then things that the county is responsible for. Just cause it, even I get confused sometimes. <laughs> right. So. Selwyn Township is uh, responsible for your garbage, for your curbside collection of garbage. So any questions um, or concerns, issues uh, regarding your garbage, certainly um, direct them to the Township of Selwyn. Any questions that you may have uh, regarding your recycling or your yard and leaf bag uh, curbside collection can go to Peterborough County. Green waste. Um, they also describe it as green waste. So if you have any issues like that, certainly, um, give the Peterborough County a call or email and they'd be happy to answer your questions. Um, so Selwyn Township, we are kind of, think of Peterborough County as an umbrella. We're under that umbrella. So we've just been, um, we operate the garbage and then that's why we're transitioning to the clear bags. We're the last township in the Peterborough County area to uh, join on board with the clear bags. So we're excited to, um, to step up and transition to clear bags and help uh, to see a decrease in uh, garbage and an increase in recycling. So that's awesome. Uh, and then we have a question from Cheryl. Um, can kitty litter be put into shopping type bags and then put into the clear larger ones? You certainly can. So if you've got um, some kitty waste or small pet waste, 
You can certainly put it into an opaque, you know, garbage or uh, grocery size bag. Um, and you can put that into your uh, clear bag at the end of the week. Um, so if you've got multiple of them, we just ask, um, you know, uh, the opaque privacy bag to not be super large. Um, and also kitty litter itself is quite heavy. So if you've got multiple cats, um, just uh, make sure that your garbage isn't um, over 30 pounds. It's in our waste bylaw that our garbage isn't 30 pounds. It's just protecting the contractors from, you know, hurting their backs and, um, you know, again, just helping uh, re reduce some of the waste um, at curb. So if you've got, you know, some places that, um, some areas have some uh, multiple cats, if you've got lots of them, um, you might want to consider taking that uh, waste directly to the landfill, but you certainly can put um, kitty waste into an uh, opaque grocery bag and put that in with the rest of your garbage for the clear bag. Okay, and then Robert has another question. Um, why can, can't, why can't Tim Horton lid, ugh, oh my gosh, why can't Tim Horton's lids not be recycled? Right. Yes. <laughs> so, um, that's a good question and it's really based off of the facility that we send the recyclables to. So as I mentioned before, we don't operate the recycling, it's done through Peterborough County. Um, the contractor they're using is called Mterra and they are unfortunately unable to take those dark colored um, plastic um, for recycling. So. That can just be put right into the garbage. If you want to recycle your cup, just give it a quick rinse and you can toss that in with your containers. I know it seems uh, counterproductive or intuitive because it's often a paper type um, product, but it's actually kind of a container because it's had some liquid or things like that. So put that into your container bin for your blue box. Okay, um, another one from Robert. Uh, do tin cans need to be rinsed? I recommend all recycles, uh, recyclables to be rinsed or cleaned out. Um, it makes sure that uh, they do get recycled at the facilities because uh, because of the large volume, it just uh, means that it can for sure get recycled. Think of your common, um, you know, you mentioned um, your tin cans, also peanut butter jars, like anything that has lots of um, material and it takes quite a bit of time to clean. So definitely give those everything you have in a rinse and put them into the blue bins. It not only will help also reduce the, um, the wildlife attraction uh, to your blue bins, but also um, you know wasps. Um, we're experiencing wasps at the landfill in the recycle area, certainly because you know pop cans, things like that have sugars. And so if you don't give it a quick rinse, it um, in, entices them to come and uh, take, a, take a drink of whatever is left in those uh, tins. So I recommend uh, giving everything a rinse or a quick clean. Yes. Okay. And then we have Laura asks, Ooh, we've gotten this a couple times tonight. Um, when will composting start? So uh, that is a great question. And we are certainly um, hoping in the next few years, we get some composting. Um, again, it's a program that would be run through Peterborough County. So they did just actually have an online survey to get some um, interest, uh, public opinion about uh, curbside collection. So the survey is unfortunately now closed, but um, again, if you have the option, you can have a backyard composter or backyard digester um, in the interim, but we are hoping to see um, uh, organics uh, to be picked up or a facility close by that way um, we can see uh, another diversion tactic for getting, uh, for, especially for our food waste, um, because we're, uh, I certainly have the issue of things get buried and then it's my, uh, some of my you know, broccoli and uh, I hate that it goes into the garbage, um, especially food waste. It does generate actually quite a bit of uh, greenhouse gases and really uh, detrimental ones. So it creates a lot of methane. So we certainly want to, um, be moving forward to an organics facility um, to uh, divert some of that material out of the landfill and be properly composted. Okay, and then Wendy, great question. Um, what magnitude of garbage reduction have other municipalities seen from going to clear bags? So off the top of my head, Wendy, I don't know. So they have, um, I have seen a few reports and they do see a decrease in, uh, in garbage, but an increase in recycling. 
So that's what our success is going to be um, from, is hoping to see a reduction in our, our you know, overall uh, garbage waste and an increase in our recycling. So either that be at the landfill, we have more uh, bins get, getting picked up throughout the week, or um, our curbside collection, uh, they tell us that they've collected more um, uh, recyclables. Because again, uh, recycling is a county uh, program, they are the ones that will take that aspect, but we'll be certainly keeping an eye on hoping to see a decrease in the amount of garbage going to the landfill. Uh, and then Wendy says, why doesn't Tim Hortons use cardboard coffee lids? Cora's does. I've actually never seen cardboard coffee lids, but that would be really great if Tim Hortons did do that. Yes. Yes. Hopefully someone in uh, upper management at Tim Hortons is seeing this. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, and a lot of, um, as uh, if hopefully some of you are aware of, um, the Ontario government is looking into, um, you know, getting some of that uh, circular economy into our recycling. So again, hoping to put some of the uh, producers responsible. So uh, we are hoping in the next few years we see some uh, some better alternatives um, for making uh, just some of that uh, those single use products a lot more sustainable um, and 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 then also recycled. So that's um, hoping to be implemented in the next couple of years. Again, that's through um, the Ontario government. So if you have any um, interest in that you can certainly uh zip on over to their website and they've got some um it's a blue box um change that they are implementing so again that's also going to help um make sure um it kind of standardizes what can be recycled and just get some things um, clarified for the entire province so it'll be a, a good thing to see um mandy asks um can plaque ugh, oh my gosh can black plastic takeout containers be recycled so that's a great question. And actually it's, um, so I, again, I would still direct that question to uh, Peterborough County. They, I believe they, unfortunately, the contractor they're using, um, Terra. I still think they don't recycle the black containers. Um, and so the, anything that has like, you know, the takeout um, bottoms that are black, um, plastic, they would just be considered garbage. Um, don't quote me on that um, because I, again, I would recommend definitely reaching out to Peterborough County and just confirming that um, because if it is something that they can recycle, that's even better because again, it's um, a, like uh, another diversion tactic from uh, putting it into the landfill. So um, just check with them and uh, they can certainly answer those questions. Um, and then Mandy asks, I think this is another one for uh, Peterborough County, but where do mixed items go such as plastic lined boxes? Plastic lined boxes. So. And even Mandy, if you have, uh, if you're able to give us an example, that'd yeah, be great. Yeah, if you have an example, Mandy, um, about a plastic lined um, uh, box. Um, I'm thinking like HelloFresh, but I could be off. Like one of those like food um delivery boxes but we can we'll go to the next question and see yeah, if mandy we'll gives back. us a we'll come back to an example okay, for sure. um and then mandy asks who do we call if animals are digging up around our newly installed digester i'm wondering if you were the one to install it hillary i may have i uh last summer was installing backyard digesters we had township selwyn had um a grant to um provide a program for backyard digesters for selwyn township residents um, which also included the installation. So if you were lucky to be a participant, I was probably the one that went out and dug your digester. Um, if you are having issues with the wildlife digging down to the, uh, into the digester, that's new. Um, I haven't heard that. Um, so I would just be, be confirm, uh, make sure that you're not putting, um, food above the ground level. Um, if it's down below the ground um, in that hole that uh, is about three feet, depending on how far I could get it down. Um, last year was a drought year, so it was really difficult. Um, and, um, but they certainly, um, so just make sure that your food waste isn't going above the ground level. So um, 
uh, when you're standing you're at your digester, just make sure as, uh, your food waste is below the, the top uh, of your ground. So, um, and that way it should help deter um, the animals because they shouldn't be smelling it. Um, if that's not the case and you're still having it below the ground and you are still having wildlife um, dig down, um, certainly give me a call and uh, we can maybe come up with some um, alternatives and ways to uh, get some wildlife away from that. Um, we did have a question about uh, raccoons earlier. Um, they often don't like um, light or noise, so if you want to put a motion detector light and that also will help sort of deter some of the wildlife. Um, but hopefully, um, as long as the food waste is below ground, um, you're not getting uh, wildlife um, interacting with your digester. And uh, we'll go back to Mandy's earlier question. She did provide an example. So the question was, where do mixed items go, such as plastic lined boxes? And she was actually gave us the example of Kleenex boxes. Oh, okay. I see. So you're talking about um, the Kleenex box that has often like the plastic lined the top. So if you, um, you can put that into the recycling, um, because plastic like that, um, we actually have sort of an example. So because it's quite a filmy type of plastic and thin, um, it can still actually be recycled um, into the cardboard papers and plastic. So sort of consider it as a fiber. So things like that can go um, into your um, papers. Um, then for your uh, blue box, um, I'm trying to think of something else that might um, be plastic lined. Um, sort of if you think about uh, where your like your milk containers or uh, juice containers they seem to have that kind of a wax or plastic type film um, they do can uh, they can be recycled into the, actually the, the containers uh, for recycling so um, again just make, do a quick rinse and then maybe toss that type of um, plastic coated um, paper into the, the container bin okay and then we have Mary asks, can the one shopping type privacy bag go directly in the garbage can if it is the only bag in the garbage, rather than double bag by placing in a clear bag? You've got it. That's exactly it. We don't want you to waste another bag uh, to then just put that bag inside another bag. So if you are producing that little of garbage, that's awesome and kudos to you. So if you want to just put that um, small privacy bag out to a curb um, and put it in the bin or just if you don't even have a bin, you can certainly leave it at the curb and it will get picked up. So no need to double bag. It's all good. So, but kudos. That's awesome. Um, and then we have another one from Robert. Uh, Chinese food containers that are black with the clear lid. Recycle or garbage? So we talked about earlier about the black plastic. Um, I recommend connecting with um, Peterborough County just to confirm whether the black plastic is recyclable or not. Um, but the top of the uh, lid or the container, if it's clear plastic, it certainly can go into your uh, recyclables, into your container bin. Uh, and then we have a question. Oh, interesting question. Uh, Laura, so, uh, oh, welcome to the area, Laura. She just moved here Hello. in May. Um, she's wondering, what is a digester? <laughs> <laughs> yes, a lot of people don't are, aren't aware of it. So um, think of, uh, so a, a digester is like a composter, kind of um, a hybrid of it. So it's sort of like a cone shape. It's a black uh, thick plastic, so it encourages um, the sunlight and it's actually called an anaerobic digester. So it means that there's no oxygen getting in. It does require um, some insulation, so um, it sort of is like an outhouse for your food waste. And it's, a f they estimate about three feet down into the ground. So you dig about a lip and then a deeper hole in the middle for your food waste. You set the cone, um, just a little bit down into the ground. So it's about six inches. It's actually not that deep down into the ground. Um, and then uh, you can put your food waste in. The benefits of having the digester is you can actually put all of your food waste there. So if you are producing, you know, um, meats, dairies, anything like that, and you um, can't, like obviously in a composter, you can't put some of those materials in it. So the benefits of the digester is you can put your meats, 
dairy, um, bread, everything into the digester. So it's a really, uh, you know, it's a composter on steroids and it's, uh, it's a really good alternative for um, people that don't want to see their um, food waste going into just the landfill. And uh, just, uh, just to let people know, uh, digesters and composters you can purchase at the township office. Hillary, you probably know the prices better than I do. Um, I think the composters are 30 and I think the digesters are 45 Yeah, we might. I think that's correct. Um, Either way, definitely contact the township office and uh, we'll make sure uh, that we have the stock first before you make the trip out. But yeah. Uh, um, Definitely, it's uh, it's worth uh, worth installing if you got the space for it. Yeah, and it does require some um, you know uh, standards for your backyard. So you have to have it in a, a very uh, a good area that has lots of sunlight, about six to eight hours a day. So in somewhere that you could actually access. Um, we're not you're not going to put it somewhere that you know in come the winter um, you're not going to be able to even get to. So you want to make sure your property is right for a digester. Um, again, you don't want to be anywhere near water or um, things like that because it can leach into the uh, to the ground surrounding it. Um, the difference is a digester is not actually going to create compost at the end. So you're not digging down to the bottom to then use that on your your uh, garden. Um, so there, if you don't have if you're not a gardener and you just wanted something to uh, get rid of your food waste, a digester is a great alternative um, because it's just there and um, it di the, all the microorganisms in the ground eat your uh, food waste and uh, anything surrounding it will really benefit um, for all, from all those nutrients that you're adding. Uh, and I know I, I see one further down, they're asking if they have composters. So we do have composters um, and digesters here at the office, not a, a plethora of them. So by all means, don't come rushing in. We may not have enough for everybody, but uh, but definitely we do have them right now. So if, if you were to drop by, um, I did check and the digesters are 55 and the composters are 30. Okay, um, thank so you for that clarification. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so next question we have is from Emily. Um, can smaller non-transparent bags of garbage go into the clear garbage bags? Certainly. So if you're, I mean, you're probably um, talking about, you know, you've, inside your house, you've got multiple little garbage bins. If you have um, bags for each of them, it, as long as they're see-through, there's no limit to the amount you put into the, your overall garbage. Um, the only issue is if you wanted to use, you know, an opaque uh, style bag for those um, areas. That way, you'd only be allowed to have one privacy bag. Um, Another alternative uh, to, again, just limit the amount of plastic use and also save you money is just opt for no little bags in those uh, smaller bins and just emptying the bin out at the end uh, for when your curbside collection is coming. Um, it saves you money and saves, um, you know, uh, helps reduce the amount of plastic um, being used. Yeah, and uh, Chris, to follow up to your question um, about composters for purchase, um, yeah, if you don't live in town, the township, you can totally still come to the office and purchase them here. You do not have to be a resident of Selwyn Township to come here and buy them. Yeah, welcome everybody. <laughs> uh, and then Robert did ask um, in terms of uh, coffee creamers, yes. uh, like those big, uh, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. Uh, the plastic lid that's on them. Does the whole thing get chucked in the recycling? Right, so a lot of people, um, you know, you take the lid off, you rinse it out, and you don't know what to do with that little lid. Um, you can just put it back onto the container and um, have it recycled. Um, often anything that's really small um, that's in the recycle, things like that, forks, straws, that's why we're seeing a lot of um, single-use plastic bands, um, because it's they're not easily recyclable, and because they're quite small, they end up um, you know, falling through uh, the facilities or they fall, get into the environment and um, and then break down. And so um, you can certainly put the lid back on and recycle it. Again, I would confirm that with Peterborough County just to make sure that Mterra uh, can recycle them. Um, and that way you, you know for sure if they do or don't. Um, but uh, Personally, I have been putting my lids back on and it still gets recycled or gets accepted. So, um, it, yeah, um, but you can, you can put those in the garbage as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we actually only have seven minutes left. Oh my gosh. Wow. We, we didn't think we'd actually be spending a full hour to on be this. To uh, Megan and I were, uh, 
this is our, again, uh, anyone that's just signed on, uh, this is our first Facebook Live. So this was a new experience for both of us and uh, we didn't know how long this was gonna go for. So we're impressed by the turnout so far and what awesome questions and uh, some just awesome residents and welcome to anybody that's new in the area. And if you have any questions, you know, um, uh, please feel free to give the township call and we'd be happy to help you. Yeah, we do have one more um, yeah. from Wendy. Uh, do you have to move the digester? Of oh, <laughs> there's something just popped up so okay. I can't see it. Um, oh, do you have to move the digester after using it for some time? Does it fill up? Yes, it does. So it is not a permanent thing. So um, depending on the amount of garbage or amount of food waste you're putting into it, um, the the company that is actually that uh, sells the digesters, they're called Barmatic, and it's a place out in Port Perry, if I'm not mistaken, and it's either Port Perry or Port Hope, and um, they recommend uh, it's not a permanent fixture, so it will need to um, get dug up, dug back up. Um, you can fill in the top, and then you can just um, find another good location for the digester and dig um, for your next site. Um, and that way you can continue to um, divert your food waste into a, uh, rather than putting it into the garbage. So yeah, they, they said about five, six years. Again, it's really dependent on the amount of food waste you're adding. So, um, and in case uh, your digester is not working as effectively, um, if you're noticing, um, you know, a kitchen catcher that's going in and it's really not um, much broken down by the week or even two weeks later, um, slow it down, uh, allow your digester to, um, to break it down. You can also just help it um, by adding some warm water. Um, and then a last case scenario, you can certainly add like a, a septic enzyme and that also just encourages some of the um, bacteria and uh, organisms to uh, break down that food waste. Awesome. So I know we do have four minutes left. We might as well go the full hour. <laughs> um, but I did put in, uh, if anybody has any more questions um, that we weren't able to um, respond to or say you just didn't feel like asking them um, in this type of forum, um, I did put Hillary's uh, email address there in case you wanted to ask any more questions. Um, but I think this went really well and maybe this is something we should do more often. Yeah. Um, or maybe even convince Peterborough County to do one for their own. It sounded like there was a lot of recycling specific questions, which is always great. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody else has some last minute questions, but we still have four minutes to go. Um, on our township website, uh, we do have, um, we have the frequently asked questions um, sheets. So all the questions we've kind of been getting over the last 16 months um, of this clear bag program implementation. So that's available on the township website, selwyntownship.ca slash clear bag. Um, and then we also have there our sorting guide. So this kind of gives you a little bit infor of information about the program, some diversion tactics, and allows you to kind of see what goes in the garbage, what goes in the recycling. And it might actually be a handy little sheet for people to put on their refrigerator or while they're uh, getting used to the program. Unless you already know how to recycle, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can definitely post a link on Facebook to the FAQ, Sarah. Uh, I will do that momentarily. Um, oh, we still recycle at Costco. Thanks to you, Hillary. This is from Megan. Oh, yay. <laughs> That's very great to hear. I'm very happy to hear that. So, woohoo, good job. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know. We've still got three minutes. And uh, just if you want to slip in a question there just to get into our draw for a year's supply of clear garbage bags by all means bombard us we may not be able to answer them all in the two minutes that are left um but we can definitely look back and i think you have the ability to answer some of the comments um after the fact yeah. but <laughs> we're not entirely sure this we're is not entirely sure how uh, how this whole <laughs> really operates so um please uh be generous with us because, uh, uh, Tech, yes, uh, social media is also um, new and, you know. For sure. Always learning curves with it. Yeah, so uh, it doesn't look like we've got any questions popping up. Um, but once again, I've had, uh, I put Hillary's contact information in the comments. 
Um, and I've also put our link to our clear bag section on our website on the uh, comments as well. Um, for Sarah, I know she wanted a link to the FAQs sheet and I will put that in right after. I just don't wanna be moving the thing around while I'm trying to type. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you so much guys uh, for sticking with us. I did see, I think we had about 35 people watching at one point, so that's fantastic. and. Uh, great to see especially being our first one like we mentioned yeah. um but thanks guys uh september 1st is coming quick it is how is it september already next week so again huge thank you to everyone who uh joined us on this uh very first facebook live uh thank you so much for all of your great questions and uh hopefully they were all answered and uh if not they were directed to something that you, you could get your uh, answers uh from. So uh, if you again have any issues or questions that you uh, want to ask, please feel free to give me a call at the office or email me and uh, happy to help you out. Yes, uh, what's your extension, Hillary? Uh, my extension is extension 234. So the phone number at the office is 705-292-9507, extension 234. Um, because of COVID, we have uh, limited staff in the office, so I will get voicemails and then give you a call back. So um, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Um, we are so happy to get some uh, wonderful people on board, and uh, if um, and then we'll do a draw for all of the co comments that people uh, put for this Facebook Live, and we'll announce the winner um, probably tomorrow for the your supply of clear bags. <laughs> oh, we have one last question real quick. Okay. Uh, what happens to items like cloths used to paint from Joe? Oh, used, used cloth with paint. So if it's like really, if it's dried paint, um, you can put that into um, the used um, clothing bins. Um, anything that is um, on it, they can either, um, they wash everything and then um, they can actually shred it. So it gets put into a recycling uh, plant and then it gets into, um, you know, cushions, things like that. Um, and then also if anything that they, they can't, they will throw out. Um, so you can certainly put it into a clothing bin or um, you can put it into the garbage. It's up to your discretion and um, so hopefully that answers that question, Joe. And we do have a bin, like we mentioned before, um, a Diabetes uh, Canada bin at the landfill. So if you're taking other stuff, you can drop that kind of uh, textiles into that bin while you're there. And <laughs> Wendy said she can hear a sound whenever we like a comment. <laughs> so I'm sure you were hearing that the whole time. Sorry, everybody. Didn't know you could hear that. Uh, but once again, thank you to everybody. We are signing off for now. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye.